Academic International Partnerships is a program aimed at developing sustainable solutions for international scientific implementation and teaching cooperation. The project BUT Inter-Academic Partnerships involves specific areas of cooperation between the Białystok University of Technology and 12 universities from different countries. It has been implemented since October 2018, with funds obtained from the National Agency for Academic Exchange. Welcome to the Faculty of Electrical Engineering, one of the faculties of Białystok University of Technology. We are at the Department of Photonics, Electronics and Lighting Technology. Light and darkness have accompanied man since the dawn of time. Some people believe that light was the beginning of everything on Earth. Others prefer the evolutional approach. But in general, we all agree that sunlight was the most important factor that created the way we detect everything around us. We notice and understand the cyclical variability of natural conditions with the season, location and hour. Each year, at the turn of the year, we have very low amounts of daylight on the northern hemisphere at high latitudes, while on the southern hemisphere, days are longer. In the middle of the year, it is the opposite. This is a yearly cycle, very important for nature, determining changes of the seasons. Daily variability of natural light is the key factor in regulation of melatonin level in our organisms. Melatonin is a hormone which is suppressed during the day and together with the sunset its secretion begins to achieve the highest level about 4 a.m.
melatonin is not the only hormone which level changes cyclically in accordance to the daily natural light variability. The second is cortisol, which is named the stress hormone. It is responsible for alertness. There is a shift between the maximum level of melatonin and cortisol. When the level of melatonin is decreasing in the morning, the concentration of cortisol in blood rises to achieve the maximum value about 10 am. Also, body temperature and other biological parameters behavior and mental abilities are varying in daily cycle. All these changes are called circadian rhythm. If the circadian rhythm is undisturbed, periods of highest activity, alertness, activity and reaction times can be predicted together with the relative changes of blood pressure or temperature. This works like a clock, which is tuned by the daylight. Circadian rhythm may be affected by various factors and as a consequence may be disturbed. Apart from disease origin, and intrinsic factors, Also, external factors may cause incorrect operation of our internal clock. They are usually connected with the shift of activity in relation to natural daylight variability. For example, when we move to another time zone, suddenly the cycle of the clock is shortened or elongated. It takes some days to adapt to the daylight cycle in new place. We may also need to be active in the period when typically in our organism melatonin level should increase. This takes place, for example, in case of shift workers. In both cases, human organism receives too much light in the period when naturally darkness is expected. This disruption is detected through the eyes.
Some years ago, it turned out that eyes are responsible not only for visual perception, but also are a part of non-image forming path. In this way, our eyes contribute to visual process, which allows us to see our surroundings, as well as regulation of our circadian rhythm and more generally, non-image forming effects, which include biological clock enjoyment, mood, cognition, behavior. Performance of visual tasks depends on lighting conditions and related lighting requirements support visual task performance and minimize visual discomfort. But due to non-image forming function, also other requirements should be taken into account. But how to do it? Our eyes are a part of a very complicated system. Most of us know the general structure of the eye. We remember that one of its elements is retina. Retina is a structure which is composed of several types of cells. Rods and cones were discovered many years ago. They are responsible for our vision. Due to rods, we can see shapes in darkness. While cones let us see colorful objects during the day. We know three types of cones on human retina. What is the difference between them? They include three types of photosensitive substances and each of them detects light in a different way. The difference lies in the wavelength range of detected radiation – blue, green and red. When light is detected by rods and cones, it affects humans through visual paths, and effects occurred in this way are called visual effects of light.
So, what are the examples of visual effects of light? When we see that some objects around us are brighter, while others darker, we can recognize the shapes or distinguish their colors. Before, we defined some quantities connected with visual effects. For example, luminance, color rendering index, or correlated color temperature. These metrics describe visual parameters of light. But as you see, there are also other types of cells on the retina. In the ganglion cells layer, some time ago a group of specific cells was discovered. so-called intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells, shortly IPRGCs. They contain different photopigment called melanopsin. The spectral sensitivity curve of this photopigment in the IPRGCs is different from the curves connected with cones. As you see, its peak appears somewhere around 500 nanometers, which is between blue and green color. That means that the reaction of each type of cone to the same light is different from each other, but also different from the reaction of IPRGCs. It's obvious that this reaction is strongly connected with some parameters describing light sources. First of all, the spectral power distribution. It was proved that IPRGCs do not contribute to the process of creating visual effects. They are responsible for another path of influence of light on humans. The effects caused in this way are called non-visual effects. What are the examples of these effects? The most important one is synchronization of our biological clock by influence on human hormone system. Consequently, it can be stated that our surroundings, which create lighting environment, affect humans in visual and non-visual sense. Mechanisms and rules of this influence are still under investigation of researchers, but there is a general agreement that quality, quantity and timing of resultant spectral power distribution at the eye level, as well as its spatial distribution, are key regulators of non-visual system.
spectral, spatial and temporal characteristics of light at the eye level depend on several factors. Main of them are daylight availability, characteristics of electric lighting and characteristics of the surroundings, for example, colors used in the interiors. According to the nature, we need day and night. We need brightness and darkness. This natural variability was with us from the beginning and nothing has changed. Almost. Observation of nature and technical development let humans create various types of light sources. All of them disturb our natural rhythm to some extent. On the other hand, we do not stay so much time outside nowadays, we spend whole days inside the buildings. As an effect, our organisms do not receive enough or correct light during the day, but during the night the opposite is true. Very frequently, the amount of light expected by our organisms is too high. Lighting standards, regulations and practice focus on visual effects and energy efficiency of lighting and do not address non-image forming responses to light, which can result in lighting conditions that compromise human well-being health and functioning as light is the main factor for them. But it is not surprising, the research in this area is still in progress and the more we investigate, the more knowledge and data we miss. One of the questions to include the non-visual effects in lighting design is what metrics should be considered. The question is difficult. There is no standard for correct description of lighting, including non-visual effects, considering terminology and limits. Specialists are using several parameters to evaluate non-visual action of light. One of them is circadian light. In the most simple words, this quantity can be understood as the irradiance of the cornea modulated by the spectral sensitivity of human circadian system, defined by the melatonin suppression. Circadian light, as can be guessed, depends on the amount of light emitted by the light source, its spectral distribution and the distance from the light source. When circadian light is known, so-called circadian stimulus can be calculated.
The limits of circadian stimulus are from zero, when activation of circadian system occurs, to 0.7, which means the saturation of the response. Circadian stimulus is directly proportional to nocturnal melatonin suppression after one hour of light exposure. Another metric used by specialists is equivalent melanopic lux, which is obtained by multiplying illuminance and melanopic ratio. Melanopic ratio is also dependent on the spectral characteristic of the light emitted by the source. This parameter seems to be very suitable for the lighting designers as it is very similar to the metrics used in case of visual effects. No matter what metrics is considered to evaluate visual and non-visual effects of light, it is obvious that in each case the spectral power distribution of light is important. Two different curves of efficacy modulate the same spectral power distribution, which allow to calculate required metrics. Some schemes of variability of these metrics can be observed. In case of visual parameters, apart from quantitative approach, the quality issues are connected with color rendering and color temperature. Similar determinants can be indicated in case of non-visual action. And all together is predictable when selected characteristics of lighting are taken into consideration. What are the typical correlations between parameters describing visual and non-visual effects? For night outdoors illuminance or indoors values up till 100 lux from incandescent source, circadian stimulus is not higher than 0,1 which is required value for supporting melatonin secretion in the evening. On the opposite, during the day, outside, illuminance value is very high and the value of circadian stimulus is saturated, causing maximum melatonin secretion. Typical indoor office illuminance levels affect the strength of melatonin suppression depending on the type of the light source, namely its spectral power distribution expressed by correlated color temperature. The higher the CCT, the stronger melatonin suppression and circadian stimulus at the same illuminance level. Let's check what are the values of selected metrics used to describe non-visual effects for selected electric light sources.
At first step, what are the typical daylight values? Even for the cloudy day, when horizontal illuminance is not very high, circadian stimulus is almost saturated. Naturally, with more daylight, this saturation occurs. In case of incandescent source, for example 60 watt bulb, even with high illuminance values, it is not possible to achieve saturation of the circadian stimulus. When LEDs are considered, final value of circadian stimulus depends strongly on the CCT. Finally, natrium lamp used in exterior lighting. In case of this lamp, achieved circadian stimulus values are extremely small. The reason is its spectrum shape, which contains mostly narrow band of light near to 600 nanometers, and this band has very low significance from the point of view of non-visual action. By the way, if we compare its characteristics with various LED lamps, we may guess that a disadvantage of the energy-efficient road lighting lamps may be their stronger non-visual effect. But what about the design limits? According to well-building standards, there are some suggestions for lighting evaluated by non-visual effects. There are minimum requirements for electric lighting only, but also both methods of delivering light in the interiors, daylight and electric light together. According to the requirements proposed in this standard for working areas in the interior, between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. at least 200 equivalent melanopic lux should be assured each day, but at least 150 equivalent melanopic lux should be provided by electric lighting. It should be noticed that vertical plane is considered because the area of interest is the cornea of the people working in the interior. Slightly different limits are suggested for a classroom. 125 equivalent melanopic lux during at least 4 hours per day for each day of the year. Let's check if traditional, well-designed lighting installation would pass the test for non-visual performance. It is easy to guess that a very important issue in case of delivery of enough non-visual stimulation in the interiors is their geographical orientation. During 2019 and 2020, a joint research on spectral variability of daylight was conducted.
The aim of this research was to find out if daylight in both locations has the same characteristics and can be characterized by the same potential in terms of non-visual effects for interiors characterized by various geographical orientation. Over three thousands of spectra were collected in both locations in various weather conditions, seasons, hours and geographical orientations, with the aim to find out what is the variability of non-visual action of daylight in both locations. Another question was, if we wanted to design a modern lighting system, with controlled in-time spectrum and taking into account natural daylight variability, should it be the same in Białystok and Naples? Obtained results allowed to propose a method of evaluation of non-visual potential of the localization and proved the differences. That suggests the need for deeper investigation of daylight in order to develop well-justified requirements as well as design more aware integrative lighting systems, including non-visual effects. These aspects are one of the main di directions of interest of International Commission on Illumination, which is expressed by the joint scientific activity undertaken by the researchers all over the world. Current works include studies on non-visual effects of light on humans, with the aim to provide guidance for safe and beneficial use in lighting applications beyond illumination for vision, various aspects of integration of daylight and electric lighting, as well as worldwide investigation of daylight characteristics. We are witnessing revolutionary changes in the lighting philosophy. And what are current requirements for the interior lighting installations? That will be the subject of another lecture. The project is financed by the Polish National Agency for Academic Exchange.